Good afternoon, guys. It's Steve O'Hare from PIA First. Uh, PIA First provides uh, trade ideas and technical analysis based trade ideas to um, exchanges, hedge funds, banks, uh, individual traders, and retail traders. And uh, today I'm going to go through our analysis and ideas on medium term calls, um, mainly on the equities commodities, and we can poke around a few other contracts if you wish. Uh, I'd like to be a little bit interactive, so or by all means say hello in the chat and um, ask your questions as we go through and I'll be do my best to address them uh, as soon as I can and uh, and we can uh, you know keep it interactive as I say it, be, uh, it always makes it feel a little bit uh, more responsive if we do that and uh, stops me from rabbiting on about rubbish stuff that you may not be interested in. So uh, let's flick across to the chart. We're going to start with equities today. Um, I'm going to look at the DAX to start with. DAX is obviously one of the most volatile uh, European indexes uh, that, uh, that we look at, we trade. So it's, uh, it's a good one to start at. And I'll give you a rundown of how we, uh, one, come to our short-term trade ideas, the intraday or the daily predictive analysis and then go on to more medium-term trade ideas and how to get the medium-term trade ideas. Um, obviously, we have, um, let me just bring it up. Let me just screen share with the, with the charts. Uh, the charts are based on Saxo Trader. Um, let me, I think we are here. Here we go. So this is uh, a DAX line chart. Line charts are, are very, are, very uh, are ideal for longer term looks and um, analysis. This is a, a weekly chart going back, way, way back. Uh, but obviously we're not so much interested at this point in time on uh, levels traded way back here, but they may come into view in, uh, in the coming months or weeks, depending on where the market goes. But if we drill it down to the 2011 rally, uh, to the 2015 peak and the sell off from there, uh, we get some good formations and uh, good ideas of where support and resistance will be and is at the moment. And we can um, start to build our trade idea. So the idea, the, the, what we try and do, as I say, we try and give a trade idea and give a good entry and exit point, a good target uh, stop level, um, and can try and keep the risk reward around minimum two to one, if not three to one. Three to one is a great risk reward. Um, it, breaking it down, it means basically for every three trades, you know, you get three to one, you get one right out of three, and, and you're, you're making money. Um, so, as long as you're, 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 uh, you, you maintain a, a disciplined approach, this, uh, this will, will be a profitable methodology uh, for, for most traders. Uh, we all have, uh, technical analysts all have their favorite uh, indicators and, and we try and you know, build that around all our trade ideas. And, and try and, uh, as, a, as a company, we have a methodology that we uh, place around our trades so, so uh, no matter which analyst writes a trade idea we're all normally singing from the same hymn sheet um, obviously as well as technical analysis there's this fundamental analysis is a, is a, is a big thing and we, we have our finger on the pulse of fundamentals we understand we read the news we look at the headlines we have a view on uh, the you know the economy worldwide and we, we look at that and we try and um, take that into account when we publish our trade ideas obviously the, the trend is dis, uh, decided by the, the fundamentals but the technical analysis is great for giving the ideal entry exit points as i've mentioned so uh we can see from this there's a formation here we're looking at is a head and shoulders formation it's a bit skewed on the on the right shoulder um, but then 
it, it's, it's a bearish formation it's on a break of this uh, neckline support here. And the market has uh, tested this and failed again. And it's at a point of retesting once more. If we want to break this down to a daily chart, there's a couple of formations we have to be aware of. Uh, we have our own bespoke uh, indicators we overlay on charts, uh, but they won't be on these charts that I'm showing you. We like to keep that to ourselves. Um, but um, from a more a shorter term point of view, we have to be aware of the possibility of a reverse head and shoulders here. This is something we have got to keep an eye on. Um, but we, I do not expect to play, it to play out at this point in time. We can see that um, from the 11th of Feb, we've had a rally, we had a gap higher in the charts. This gap or void in the market, we expect to be filled at some point. Um, and we had a decent rally higher. And this equated to an ABCD possible correction, which uh, highlighted a, a resist, a uh, target just above 10,000. We take that from the point A, the low, to the swing high and expect that to replicate on the CD leg. Uh, Friday, we had a doji candle. This is an indecisive pattern. It produced a uh, almost a the same resistance, it, the same high as way back when we initially had a swing high from the the uh, this sell off. The high this date on this date was uh, nine thousand nine hundred nineteen. And on Friday, it was below 9,900, it was 9,897. So this looks, looks, to, looks to have stalled, and we've seen pressure coming over the weekend. Uh, equities are under pressure uh, at this point in time. There's talk of uh, the Brexit, Britain exiting Europe. Uh, this will have a, uh, consequences either way, and we have to accept that uh, in the run-up to the UK deciding, the public deciding on whether they want to exit Europe or not. We're going to have different polls suggesting in, out, and we are going to have to bear that in mind when we trade, as there's always the possibility of um, volatile spikes either way, in either direction, dependent on commentary from politicians, the polls, the polls, how the polls are read, how the polls are produced, and so you know that there's extra volatility in the market. So it's a it's a good idea to uh, maybe cut size down on intraday trades uh, because the noise will be will affect the market. So we will get spikes in either direction depending on the news. Um, but I like I, one of my favourite indicators is the Ich Ichimoku cloud. It's a, a forward casting. Um, resistance predictor and support predictor and it also has indicators within it which are can be used as systems by you know buying selling ideas can be generated just from indicators alone um, a good system would incorporate more than one indicator Ichimoku cloud in itself is is Class as one indicator, but it has different types of uh, signals within that indicator. Um, you can get, uh, you just break it down, just a, a quick idea. You have the two lines here, you have the standard and the turning line, the red and the blue line, just around this area here. When the turning line crosses over the standard line, that's a buy signal. Uh, when prices break through the cloud, that's a buy signal. The cloud acts as support or resistance, depending on whether the price is above or below the market. So at this present time, we, we have this indicator here, which uh, called a buy signal, and it's run into cloud resistance here. And this cloud resistance is evident from the high Friday. So um, with our medium term analysis looking to sell into rallies, which we maintain, um, and we have this level of 9,920 and the psychological resistance at 10,000. 
that uh, we have our eyes on and the Ichimoku cloud. This is really tough resistance for the market to get to get through. And uh, the, the, the momentum doesn't seem to be strong enough to be able to uh, get it through there now. So we expect a correction lower from this level on the short term basis and medium term basis. This would be a level we would be looking to sell short set shorts. Uh, I'll stop on a trade of setting shorts um, around 9,800 to 9,900 would be a trade above 10,000 would be a stop. We're targeting a, a retracement back to, to lower levels. So, um, you, you know, if we're talking about a three to one risk reward trade on today's market, looking to sell at 97.38, that's uh, 260, 270 points below the stop. You're looking at at least a profit target of 800 points which would be taking us back to this gap area which we look at from the 12th to the 15th. In fact, on the 16th, it dipped down a little bit further, but there's a gap here, which we expect to be filled, as we said. So again, we'll, we can give a more accurate prediction on that just by bringing Fibonacci lines in and we expect at least a 78% retracement back down. So that would be our take on DAX at present. On an intraday basis, we were looking to sell at 98.10 this morning. The high is 98.07, so that trade wasn't triggered. Um, the target for the trade this morning was 97.10. The low is 96.84, so it's been through there. So. Uh, we can call that partially successful. <laughs> Although the trade hasn't triggered, it's, it was the right idea. Um, but as a PL on our performance sheet, which is available on the website, we would actually say no trade today. Um, so yeah, I mean, breaking down on the these indicators, another candle we look at, uh, another indicator we use is candlesticks. And this on the four hour, on this sorry hourly chart at one o'clock on the fourth on Friday one o'clock. So this was uh, from non-farm payroll. We got an, a bearish outside bar, and that as was uh, tested was failed, and prices have moved lower. So let's uh, pop across to. FTSE charts. Now, FTSE, I'm in a slightly different uh, thought mode. Obviously, again, everything centers around the the impact of uh, the potential Brexit. And uh, on the basis of this, um, sterling and UK equities have been hit harder than uh, their counterparts in Europe. And we're, we're very pressured very heavily in, into the middle of February. Now, um, again, we could look back at the weekly chart. And let me just take this is a take back a bit further and just give you a, an idea of where it is over the last 10 years. And again, you can see we've broken some decent levels. We're in a bearish channel. You can see there. Let's give a channel up for you. Bearish channel, but you can see Price action here has broken above this bearish channel. We picked up in this last week. I did a big piece for Saxo uh, regarding this. And I'll break it down onto the a more uh, colorful weekly chart with candlesticks and uh, the cloud involved as well. And you can see that, let me just change my cursor. 
It's candle here, the 8th of February. That's a bullish hammer. Uh, so although uh, on the week, net on the week, it closed lower, price action uh, was contained on, in the higher levels of that candle. So we had, we opened, we moved aggressively lower all week and towards the end of the week, rallied, closed, uh, well, a fair distance from the open. It's still 140 points from the gap between the open and close. But at one point in time, this was 380 points lower from the high. So it was a good recovery, and it, it was a produced, although, as I say, it was a net weekly loss, it produced a bullish candle. And from the outset on the following week, buyers came in from the open, that, that was the low, and corrected higher. And this is where um, you had the panic of Brexit, and then the market di digest news information over the weekend, and readjust itself over the weekend to then correct higher. And we've had three positive daily candles from here. And last week, the, sorry, the week before, yeah, last week, the, um, we had a close above this downward trending resistance line. And this downward trending resistance line can hooks up at one, two, three, four, five, six, six points. But this is the key uh, level here. Now you can, you can argue where this actual trend line is. Let me just get rid of this for you. Trend line only needs three points. This is, there's three points here. So the, the major trend line would be a lot higher, but then you can try, you can ignore the tails of these candles, and this connects more points, so it's a, probably a stronger trend line. If you join it with, with the most recent high, swing high, then you get a break and close above. So we have a, um, our idea on the FTSE is a little bit more positive than the DAX. And we are monitoring price action now to see whether this holds. So our, our, our short term idea on this is for a move higher. Again, an ABCD correction would take up to 6400. But it is running into a bit of resistance, just above 6200 at present. But we remain bullish on this for a, a deeper correction higher and again I, I, I state the correction I, I don't expect this to um, be strong for too much longer so if we're looking to set longs in the FTSE We'd be looking to set longs around about 6100 on a slight dip. 6125 was a, a previous uh, key area of resistance that's now turned into support. And we expect prices to uh, stay above here over the coming days uh, unless we have a major market um, major market news thrown into the mix. And so we're looking at set longs here. Our stop on this trade would be a break back below this cloud support, but also these lows of the 29th Feb, 1st of March. It's coming in 60.30 and 60.40. So long here, stop below 6,000. Give it a little bit of room. You've obviously got the cloud um, coming in at 60.24, cloud support. Uh, and looking to move higher to 6400. Um, momentum's still pretty strong. Um, so, yeah, the FTSE is slightly outperforming. Um, we've got other markets up here. 
but um, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at the Dow now. And again, Dow, we, we look at uh, the, the longer term bull channel and how that is being tested at the moment. The downside is being tested. So what really stands out for me at the, this moment in time is this trend of lower highs, but this support line, which comes in at 15,340. That's pretty key. It's a long way off at the moment, obviously, where we're sort of, we're having this rally back. And there's a major also downtrend line, which is, is pretty good. That's got for the three points connecting. So again, at this point in time, you're looking on this month. Remember, this is a monthly chart. 17,734. It's, um, it'll have to break above these levels for us to even consider that the, the market's uh, set for a, another move higher. So this is under pressure again as well. It's not as straightforward as the European equity indices. Um, the US, the dollar seems to be benefiting from this uh, current mayhem in the Euro Eurozone. One of the um, formations we looked at on the Dow and picked up uh, between January and February was a, a double bottom. And now double bottom can be classed when two major candle, major moves, um, very similar to each other, have a similar low. The low here was 15,450. The low here was 15,500. So it's only a difference of 50 ticks. Uh, now when you consider the, the average moves in Dow to be 150, 200 points a day, um, that's not a lot. 50 points isn't a lot. And uh, we found a point, uh, first of Feb, where the market reverse from this was this highlighted formation was an evening star formation which is a bearish formation and that produced a downward move which has formed this second low and then the prices have moved up now this uh, formation when um, prices break above this high is called a double bottom formation up until it breaks above this high which was uh, broken on the 22nd of Feb, it's a potential double bottom formation. It's only considered a double bottom formation when it breaks the high. So, after breaking this high, 16,511, and freeze, we'll say 16,500, um, price action has remained pretty strong. We had a, this, this spike lower on the 24th of Feb, Again, it produced a bullish type candle, a shooting star candle. These shooting stars or evening stars or, or sorry, sorry, this is a bullish hammer. Uh, it's the opposite to a shooting star. Shooting star can be seen there. Bullish hammer is at the bottom uh, of a trend normally. But it, when you do get them during an upward trending move, they again can be a powerful buy signal. So, what, as price action remains above 16,500, again, we're positive on this, uh, on the potential of this market. The measured move target for the double bottom is 17,566. So, uh, and that will be just above the 78.6% retracement, which is a, a normal Fibonacci retracement level, a standard Fibonacci deep retracement level. So, we're positive on down. Um, and you know, there's uh, this the US seem to be benefiting somewhat from the uh, the noise in, in, in the Eurozone. Uh, SP is uh, obviously all these indices have different ingredients in, in them, so you'll have on the Dow more, more of an industrial um, product equity indice. Uh, the FTSE will be with more technology, and and, um, and you'll have other indices which, the like Nasdaq, would be more technology, and and you, you've got to consider maybe what gets affected most. Sometimes these indices play off against each other when you get a commodity move, or when you you get 
uh, a technology uh, concentration of news. So we we'll look at S and P, Standard Poor's 500, and we could look at the uh, the moves in there. And again, obviously, last week's move back to the 2000, the significant psychological 2000 level. I do refer to some points as uh, psychological levels, and they, they they are quite important because price is, is a reflection in any market. Price is a reflection of the, you know the supply and demand and the and the and the market participants' view on where prices should be. You know, something's only worth what someone is willing to sell and buy it for. That's basic supply and demand, um, and I tend to find that. All prices are, are mirror or reflect the psychology of, of us as participants, as uh, us as traders. So you, whether you're a, a small trader, trading your own money, um, trading a small fund, trading a large fund, trading a pension, trading for a bank, uh, hedge funds, whatever, you 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 all have you all part and parcel of. The market, you know, there's there's no one that is uh, bigger than the market, and so uh, we, we tend to find that uh, we as we naturally look at psycho psychological and, and treat psychological levels with a bit of um, uh, restraint or um, or concern, and um, you tend to find that prices stall around psychological levels or once they break that psychological level they they tend to carry on going so this is quite key it's a quite key week for the s p um, after three consecutive up weeks um, from this bullish hammer um, and we bring the fibonacci into it we can see that we've uh, we've hit the 61.8 percent retracement again 19,000, sorry, 1998, just below 2,000. So that's key. So you're getting selling coming in from here. Uh, but the selling's been limited. So we'd still be positive on this uh, to at least try to make it to the 78.6% retracement. Again, this can be bought from a, um, a double bottom formation here. Neckline here. Get another line up. The horizontal line. So it has to break this line, close above it, and pretty much that confirms a double bottom formation. And the measured move target would be for this double bottom, this move to replicate. That takes us up to 20,089, 20,090. And again, that will coincide with these um, indecisive candles reflecting here. So we'd be bullish on this. I like to, um, we, we look at trend lines, we look at uh, EMAs, we look at moving averages, we look at, uh, we even look at pivot levels. It's very, uh, it can be very handy to just have a good idea where pivot levels are because there's a lot of uh, traders follow pivot levels. So naturally that will reflect back into the market um, and they work so you know why not have an idea where they are and use them so if we attach the pivot levels on here let me just make it a weekly pivot level the weekly pivot coming in at 1977 so from a medium term perspective we would be positive on this and as long as the prices stay above the trend, there's the trend line coming in there. So that would, we'd say the trend line comes in at 1960. The pivot level is 1977. So for maybe for a one to three day trade, we'd be looking to buy dips in here down to 1977. Your stock can be at 1960, so a 17 tick stop. So again, you're looking between a 35 and 50 tick target on that. That would take us to the 78.6% retracement. Now, that's a basic way of looking at it. There's, 
the key important thing to do when you're approaching markets, when you're looking at markets, when you're trading markets, is to always have a have a set plan, a trading plan, which you don't deviate from. Now you will have days where you have drawdowns, you've got to accept that you're going to suffer losses. But as long as you have a trading plan or a trading approach, which you believe is successful, uh, which has a, a, a standard two to three to one risk reward ratio, uh, more often than not, it will give you, you a more chance of success than not. Um, so, you know, you've got to uh, be confident, be disciplined. Discipline is key. Be confident and stick to the trading plan. Don't deviate from it. Um, you know, if you, you've got to ha understand risk reward parameters and make sure you're trading the right size so that you it can give you more chance of being successful. Because if you don't have the right um, trade size, then you're not going to make uh, what you expect to make, or you could blow your account very quickly indeed. If you have a, a small account or a large account, if you if you haven't got the trade parameters right, then you're not going to last long if you don't approach it in the right way. Unless you get lucky, but then you know you won't get lucky for long. <laughs> I've been in the market long enough to know that the lucky traders have their time, uh, but the more consistent traders, the ones that are more disciplined and have a, a very uh, focused trade approach, last a lot longer in the markets and, and make more money out of the markets. So that's equities in a nutshell. Any other equity markets that anyone?
Hi guys, I um, think I may be back. I'm back. If I could, Sarah. Let me just. Trying to get the screen back, guys. wonders of modern technology. Right. Have we got the screen back? Right, sorry you guys. Um, I'm back. Uh, if you can say hello, I'll know you're there. I can carry on. I was going to look at oil. Oil has obviously generated a huge amount of interest. And we can we can have a look at the, the chart on this. Again, we can um, I'll take it back to a weekly chart. Uh, on here I've got the oil against the US uh, US dollar CAD and it shows that the um, Dollar CAD is inversely IPAN. Dollar CAD inversely correlates with um, with oil prices, and yeah, we, we can see that the sort of the reaction from the, the basically the lows in oil and the highs in Dollar CAD and the retracement, and it gives you a good indication. That's a good if you do like, want to trade oil. Also, have a look at Dollar CAD. And bear in mind that they are inversely correlated. So we've had a nice rally from uh, mid-Feb, uh, coincides with the equity rally. Obviously, equity markets, equity indices, uh, a fair few of them have got mining and, and, and uh, oil stocks in them. So as oil um, price increases, should lead to more profitable results for the oil companies, mining companies. And we've seen a big break higher uh, on the daily chart uh, Friday. Um, significantly broke above the the Ichimoku cloud, and this is on a um, daily continuation chart. This is showing the April price from the um, Saxo platform. So, yeah, this was this was pretty crucial, pretty important, and again. If I take the Ichimoku off, sorry, the uh, Fibonacci off, we can do a few projected levels. Uh, Fibonacci projections, or sorry, extensions, projections, whatever you want to call them. Give you an idea. Eight. Start of the year, I was looking at this oil uh, extending lower. Um, did a piece around Christmas again uh, for a couple of firms, looking at making sure we look to get short around below fifty dollars. Targeting twenty-two dollars fifty was my initial target. It hasn't quite reached there. We've reacted higher, and and this uh, 
present that shows no signs of slowing but i would um be pretty careful with this it is a a, a an ending wedge formation which i believe may not have too much farther to run um so i'm looking for a reversal pattern in this now the uh, a little while ago we when once we broke above this um had this candle here on the 22nd of feb this was a key break and then we projected to move higher to 35 dollars now we've extended past that this again this was an abcd I'll, I'll break it down i might be jumping ahead a little bit uh, if I am, um, tell me to slow down, take me back, whatever. But again, we had we had this um, these candle formations. Although this is uh, more of a, a Doji candle formation, uh, they 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 are like bullish hammers, especially when prices get back to towards the upper half of the candle. This is a, a typical morning star formation. Again, a, a morning star formation resulted in a decent rally up to $35 here went for lower again again morning star formation and the rally has continued and, and, and uh, broken above previous resistance and uh, looks pretty strong still no sign of a, a correct correction lower yet but I, I would um, I think upside could be pretty limited in this 38 above 38 dollars 38 50 that's a uh, a key level key area of resistance got potential to go there over the next coming days or week uh but um if you're not along of this i'd be uh the 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 idea would be to to, to to fade the rally only if we get a corrective pattern or corrective signals so i'm looking at this carefully um but yeah, it's but it's going. It's looking good. You know, if equities are to take take a knock, this could uh, result in a, a pullback lower. But after Friday's, you know, seriously strong candle, you can't you can't sort of like battle against this at, at present. So medium term perspective, I'd either be looking to buy dips, uh, but it have to be a, a good dip lower i think this morning on on crude oil we're looking at buy dip 35.50 i'll try and show you our, our morning calls again to give you a good idea of how we uh, how we operate um let me just flip i'll change screens briefly Uh, this is quite good actually having I mean, this screen it has our charts here and our analysis uh, basic analysis this morning these are predictive calls so again looking just on the daily trade idea we produce a new one every day um, we looked by at 35.50 uh, price action has posted a bullish engulfing candle and it's positive for short-term sentiment and that's this candle here a break of the medium term downward trending resistance at 36.60 um would should encourage buying let me just show you the resistance thirty six sixty nine at the high today so let's that's the resistance line which should encourage buying uh, so we, we don't want to buy at these levels because it's extended high. We'd rather buy a dip or buy a break above. Um, so the initial call this morning was that. Due to an ending wedge formation, we continue to treat extended gains with caution. Trades at the highest level in 44 days. Preferred trade is to buy on dips. Our secondary trade on that would be to buy a break. That'd be more of a re reactive trade. Uh, we'll be introducing reactive trades in, in the next quarter. Um, so this gives us a, a 
idea of the price. This this price is FXCM prices on different platforms. They differ, so you'll get the thirty six fifty on uh, Saxo, thirty seven seventy five on um, on FXCM. Sell your practice account, not a real account. This one we're we're looking to again introduce uh, live trading accounts on this, and that shows that uh, buying it. Also shows our short euro um, short tax trade short at ninety eight ten. I was short over the weekend on on this, and uh, that's still sitting there now. So um, that's oil, gold. Everyone loves to talk about gold. Gold as well as it, I'm. Uh, I've been bullish on gold for a little while. Especially after a break, this is a more of a this is a daily chart. So this was key. This is like a bearish pennant formation that formed. Um, if we go back weekly chart, it gives us a bigger picture look. And this is uh, an ending wedge formation also. Uh, it's broken out a little bit early, but um, still very positive. Very difficult to argue a case of selling gold. I'd be looking to buy dips in gold. We've got a key level around 11.90, this level here. Prices were trading up here, early Feb. Our call was, uh, although it was trading around 12.30, 35, we looked to buy a dip to 11.90, nailed that one, so that was nice. Um, prices reacted higher. The trend line resistance being broken, and despite this shooting star type candle forming, support, remained evident and so the, the buying continued and we had this nice solid trend line support that we're looking at now um 12.50 this high here 12.53 now provides support so we're looking to buy into the dips this morning we're looking to buy a dip at 12.60 and on a more medium term trade idea, we'd be looking to buy a dip maybe around about 12.25, 12.30. Stop on that would be a break of 11.90. So you're looking about a 35 to 40 tick um, loss, uh, stop on that, 35 to 40 tick stop. So you're looking, you've got to be looking at at least an 80 tick profit. Now we have a uh, projected move, measured move on this. Well, the flag, 1420. But if we take a projected move on the actual triangle itself, which it broke from, that's around about the 13 area. So target on that would be $1,300. Um, and after failure on Friday at 12.80, there was quite high volatility on this. Again, it dipped down to 12.50, supported very well, and it's looking to form a bit of a bullish engulfing candle at present. If prices are maintained into the close, that'll be very positive for gold again. But as I say, medium term, we're looking to buy dips to 12.25, 12.30, target. 13, 13, 15, and even up to 14, 20 on a more medium term basis. Silver's been also pretty positive. Um, there's still, it's still almost in that ending wedge. So, and it's got the weekly Ichimoku cloud that's causing silver a, a bit of a drag. But it's performed well over the last few days. We've had um, four 
sorry, said, well, since uh, the 29th, we've had a good move up, although this is a, uh, this is, it's produced a higher high, uh, but it closed net lower. One, two, three positive days. And again, we're not quite above the previous resistance of the 11th of Feb. Let me just switch this. But we are in gold. Shows that gold's outperforming slightly. And there's no real sign of it slowing down at all. So again, looking to buy dips in silver, even from an intraday perspective. We were looking to buy at 15.50 this morning. Stop was 15.37, target 15.75. And it has dipped down there. We can look at it on the hourly basis. This trade was posted at 8, well, it was updated at 8.13. Updated at 8.13. The actual trade was posted um, before 7 o'clock. Um, so that's triggered. On this 8 o'clock bar, got to a low 48. Uh, obviously, you can see we do plenty of other. We do 28 products. And you know it's that's uh, quite a lot to pump out on a daily basis. We do medium-term video calls, obviously through FX Street, and, and we're going to start doing reactive calls in the next quarter, as I say. I hope I've um, enlightened you as to exactly what we look at, and obviously I'm very free to answer any questions you may have um, either today or directly or through FX Street. So, uh, good luck with trading this week. Um, yeah, don't be, don't be afraid of asking any questions. I'll, I'll hang around for a couple of minutes just in case anyone wants to uh, answer, ask anything. And no question is a stupid question. Always remember that. Don't be afraid to, uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes stupid questions are the best questions. And a lot of people can learn a lot out of the stupid questions. So, I, uh, I never... Never sort of, um, I always sort of treat any sort of question with a, a lot of respect because being in the markets as long as I have, you you know that uh, it's uh, a lot of things can maybe get misinterpreted or misunderstood, and the markets are, are very volatile places. So, um, good luck with trading, and uh, I'll speak to you soon.